conference, they presented a cure for AIDS and it was immediately suppressed. Why? This is a package of Wrigley's chewing gum. When I was a kid, it cost a nickel. When I bought one at the John Wayne Airport before I was flying east recently, it cost a dollar eight cents. This package of chewing gum represents the entire cost of curing HIV, cancer, Epstein-Barr, hepatitis, even herpes, that takes about five months. These others take about three weeks. And this is proven, and we'll prove it to you before you leave the room tonight. So my one prop in this show is a package of chewing gum, and the price of this chewing gum will cure these formerly incurable diseases. And I want you to know this, and I want you to try it with your sick friends, and it will work. In the beginning, when I first heard of this and decided to research it and maybe reconstruct this therapy with my own money, don't forget I'm not selling anything. I have nothing to sell you. I haven't gotten a penny from any of the dozens of people who are building these and curing all their friends. Most of the people who are building them today had a sick wife, lupus, chronic fatigue syndrome. They saw the plans in magazines. It's been published in about seven medical journals and about ten consumer magazines. Went down to Radio Shack, built, bought the parts, built them, got their wives out of bed, got them out of the clutches of these very expensive doctors. Now they're back at work, living happily ever after, we hope. We'll tell you about immortal blood last. This is really a surprise. So basically, I think before we get into the technical part of this, it's not too technical, 10-year-old kids are doing this, I want to share a legal U.S. document with you that might be a tremendous surprise. I did not print these up at the Xerox place before we left. The other papers were printed at midnight at Kinko's because I wanted them to be here today. But I want to read the most remarkable document that I personally have ever seen, and I've worked in this field for many years. For the people who will hear this tape or see it, we're reading from U.S. Patent Number 5188738, which was finally issued on February 23rd, 1993, by the U.S. Patent Office after they have demanded massive documentation. There are several things you cannot patent. Perpetual motion, for example, that's considered impossible. And many other things. But one of these was a cure for AIDS because this shakes to the very roots a $20,000 a year price tag to Glaxo Welcome for combination therapies including AZT, DDI, DD5, many others. And once an AIDS patient starts these, he's on them for the rest of his life or he will surely die. Once a patient is on this, in three weeks he will be symptom free and back at work, regardless of his blood tests. And in this patent, inventor Stephen Colley, that was the man who made the original discovery, and for 13, there are 14 of these total from different places, MIT, Harvard, etc. Every one of these patents describes this new paradigm in medicine that if you talk to the colleges, they will deny having anything to do with. So it's up to us at the grassroots to get this information out there where it will help. And this is pretty amazing. And I'm going to leave this copy with Mark and he is to Xerox these for two cents a side at uh, Staples or Office Supply, and that's the price in L.A. I had to pay seven cents to get these ready in time. And anyone who wants these will pay Mark whatever they cost, plus about 10% for his time, and you will have the proof in your own hands. And I'm going to read the proof to you right now. We're in column one, line 30, and it said... Um, because of this problem, 
The present invention has been devised to attenuate any, as an engineer I don't like this word any, but it's proven to be true, to attenuate any bacteria virus, including the AIDS HIV virus, parasites, and or fungus contained in the blood, either contributed by a donor to the point that any such contaminant is rendered ineffective for infecting a normally healthy human cell, but does not make the blood biologically unfit for use in humans. Now, don't forget, the patent examiners required massive documentation before they would issue this. They go on in column 2, line 10, again they state, Bacteria, virus, fungus, and or parasites contained in the blood or any other body fluids are rendered ineffective to infect or affect normally healthy human cells. And then they go on when we get to the claims, which is where the real meat of a patent lies. If they're allowed these claims, then they have an exclusive right to this. conjunction with the magnitude of the biologically com compatible current flow. For example, treatment of virus in media at 100 microamperes for three minutes has been observed to substantially attenuate, render ineffective, the AIDS virus. Similar treatment at other field strength values and lengths of time will have a similar attenuating effect on bacteria, virus, parasites, and our fungus which are present in blood or other bodily fluids being treated. We'll show you how to get it out of the lymph tissue for $19 for the device, about $2 for the batteries in a couple of minutes. They go on and on and on this way, but what's the catch, boys and girls? You may want to zoom in on this, Mark. Here in figure one, which embodies the main thrust of the patent, it shows the human forearm. A hypodermic needle has been inserted into the ulnar artery, U-L-N-A-R. The blood is taken out of that artery run past two little electrodes, which are one inch apart, connected to an alternating current source of supply, namely a battery with a relay on it. And then, like dialysis, even back into the opposite arm or into a bottle where that blood is totally safe and uncontaminated for use in transfusions. <coughs> How many hundreds of thousands of hemophiliacs are AIDS positive now because they've gotten contaminated blood. We've had 50,000 deaths so far and there has not been reason for one death. Or, if you have enough money, let's hypo hypothetically say, this is hypothetical only, that you're a basketball star and you disappear for about five months and when you come back you're playing basketball basketball and the sweat, your sweat is splattering on your and the other teammates. What happened? You went and you sat in a chair similar to chelation. You spent about three hours a day for about five months having the blood taken out of your body. The problem here is that little bitty tenth of a cc of blood in my left earlobe and that blood in my big toe, my left hind foot, has got to circulate back into the body and go past these electrodes during a certain period of time until that blood is cleansed of all the aliens, all the parasites, all the alien life forms in that blood. So they show a second approach.